All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, it, it's not, I would say, typical uh, for us to have a, a press conference around the on sale of, of season football tickets, but uh, we feel candidly like this isn't a, a typical off season, and we're really excited about uh, what happened uh, in Memorial Stadium last fall. We know that our fans uh, felt that enthusiasm. You saw it in the uptick in, in ticket numbers and attendance, uh, just the general energy in and around Memorial Stadium last fall was was unlike anything we felt here in, in a long time. And uh, so as we headed into this off season, it was very important for us to be intentional about building a campaign to to really make an effort to fill Memorial Stadium. We need to get that building as full as it can possibly be for a long list of reasons, not the least of which is uh, it, it creates an unbelievable environment for our fans. Uh, we, we really and for everybody who's been around this football program and this stadium for a long time, we, we know what it feels like when Illinois football is rolling. We know what the tailgating feels like. We know what Grange Grove feels like. We know what Illini Walk feels like. We, we know what it feels like when the Illini run onto the field for the first time and when the ball gets teed up and when the fireworks go off. We know all the things that happen uh, around Illinois football and, and ultimately, we want to make sure that we're providing that opportunity, that chance to be part of something bigger than yourself to as many people as possible. That opportunity to make lifelong memories with your family, with your friends, with your kids, with your parents, with your grandparents. Uh, that's something that as you reflect back on your time around Memorial Stadium binds all of us together is, is the, the chance to be in that building and around this program at those special moments. And, and really, you need to look no further than the building we're in today, State Farm Center, and, and you reflect back on the end of last basketball season and the people who were in this building uh, as, as this team progressed through the year and, and as we clinched the Big Ten Championship with that last game against Iowa. The people who were in that building made a memory. They, they had a moment that they will never forget. And, and we want to make sure that we're creating that same opportunity for as many people as possible around the memories that we know are coming with Illinois football. And certainly, uh, there are a lot of things that we can do uh, to, to try and encourage that. Uh, but for us, it starts with a, a really dramatic rollback of our ticket prices. And Cassie will have a chance to talk about some of the details on that here momentarily. But we want to make sure that we're making our tickets as affordable as possible to families, to to people who maybe haven't traditionally been in the in the building or maybe haven't been in the building for some time. Uh, again, we want to eliminate any reason that they might not want to come to Memorial Stadium. And we believe that the team on the field uh, is, is really compelling. Uh, obviously, last year, when first time we've been ranked in the top 25 for a number of years, our, our best season since the Rose Bowl year. Uh, we had some players out there who were going to go in the NFL draft uh, shortly. We had some players out there who will go high in the NFL draft. We had all Americans. Uh, and, and we did some things defensively, offensively, special teams that Illinois football hasn't been able to do in, in some time. And uh, we know that our fans are excited about what's coming back. And we return the, the most number of all Big Ten performers of any school in the Big Ten West. Uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm around our head football coach. Uh, the, the great players that we have on this team, the personalities that they're now being able to show through social media and some of their different activities, uh, and ultimately what, what we believe is a very exciting brand uh, of football on, on both sides of the ball. Um, so want to really encourage our fans to get excited. Uh, this Family First initiative, uh, of course, ties back into uh, the family hashtag that, that our football program has rallied around here over the last couple years. Um, but it, it is much more than a hashtag. We have talked at length, and, and certainly since I've been here, about the Illinois family uh, and, and the ties that bind. And, and I think that those football Saturdays uh, really create that opportunity for people to be a part of something bigger than themselves, for them to feel a sense of belonging, for them to feel like they are connected not only to their family and to their friends, but also to their neighbors, to their fellow alumni, to their, to their community members. Uh, the energy around that stadium last year was palpable, and we need to make sure that we continue to amplify that, build upon that, and, and build upon the momentum uh, around this football program. So some of the details um, that you'll see in the press release uh, really uh, kind of surround our, 
our in-depth look at our ticket prices and not just the prices of the tickets, but also the layout of the stadium. Um, for almost everyone uh, who is a season ticket holder or wants to become one, the ticket prices will be significantly uh, less than what they paid a year ago. Um, our, our middle of the field area, which we call our prime, in the past was, and it still is an iFund area, but it was all priced the same at $359. Now it's tiered in three different prices uh, with the the blue areas, 126, 128, and 227, still at 359. The center of the field at 127 is the, our highest valued area. So we did go up uh, $20 there, but everywhere else, the prices are at least uh, 50 to $60 cheaper than what they would have paid a year ago. And it's pretty aggressive what we decided to do, but it is geared toward growing in volume. It's geared toward people who maybe had two tickets last year, seeing that they can pay less and maybe increase that number to four, uh, bring their neighbors, go and, and, you know, reach out to people that they know went to one game and we will be doing the same reaching out to a lot of people that took advantage of some of our promotional deals later in the year and trying to convert them to people who want to be there for all seven Saturdays and we needed to create a price point in our season tickets that made it valuable for them to do that the more we grow in our season ticket numbers the more valuable that ticket is for them because there'll be scarcity in the market and those single game tickets will be a little bit harder to find. So our prices, you know, now you can get in the building at $99. So under $100, that's a little, about $14 a game. So a family of four wanting to come to a game, they're spending about $60 a game if they've got season tickets in that horseshoe area or in the upper east balcony. But there are areas that people were paying, uh, I think um, last year, so there was a group that was paying uh, 359 now down to 299 um, and 279 down to 199 so some real big uh, decreases but ways that we think we can really kind of ignite our fan base to to grow and and come into the stadium um, we also will have some season ticket benefits outside of what we think are the you know intrinsic benefits of fun and creating memories but uh, we will we'll, we'll probably roll out some some more improvement a more a bigger improvement plan later but what we can say for right now is anyone who renews by april 21st will get a discount off their chair back of about ten dollars so now between between now and april 21st uh, also we'll be creating deals of the game in concessions and merchandising and our atkins golf club will be discounted for uh, members who are season ticket holders as well. So those are just some of them. You know, we we offer payment plans, so people who want to renew now can break that up over five months. Uh, and then all of our season ticket holders and iPhone members do have that opportunity to get away game tickets, first chance at post game tickets, uh, bowl game, things like that. So there are real values uh, to being a season ticket holder and this whole campaign is about uh, kind of creating a sense of, of community and belonging around that. We, we want Memorial Stadium to be a place to be and this pricing structure should eliminate a lot of barriers for people who want to do that. And the timing of that has started today. Today. So renewals went on sale today. Uh, our deadline is April 21st for renewals and then we get into upgrades. Uh, another big component of changing these prices is people who find themselves paying less now have the ability to move uh, more inward, more center into the stadium because they can pay the same price and get better seats. So we, we, we hope that those are some of the um, benefits our fans see by the, the price decreases, that they can find themselves in better seats with more seats or being becoming a season ticket holder when maybe they were a multiple single game or even just one single game purchaser in the past. Josh, anything to add before we open up for questions? Or? No, I, I think it's just a, it's a great opportunity for us to continue on the momentum that's around Illinois football. And, and certainly there, there is a lifetime of memories to be had at Memorial Stadium on Saturday afternoons, and, and we hope our fans will take advantage of that. Uh, as Cassie mentioned, we have a lot of things in the works to try and reward those people who, who want to come into the stadium and join us for seven Saturdays in the fall. Uh, I, I think that it's uh, just a, a great opportunity for us to fill the building, create an unbelievable atmosphere, and, and ultimately we're creating that sense of belonging, we're making those memories, but we're also putting our football team in the best position possible to be successful, and, and I know that's really important to our fans as well. We want to make sure that 
we're taking full advantage uh, of the momentum that we started last last year and, and are continuing to build on it in the years ahead. First question is Bryce in the back. Yeah, um, with the Big Ten winter meetings wrapping up, have you guys finalized a 2024 football schedule and do you see divisions changing? Yeah, those conversations are, are ongoing. Uh, certainly we've, we've continued to evaluate a lot of different avenues, ways that we could approach football scheduling. Uh, would expect to, to have some decisions made and some of those things communicated out here in the, in the not too distant future, but uh, nothing to share yet. Right here in front. Two, right. At two, one is, um, have you guys, are you satisfied with where student seating is? Or I know that's been a talking point of Coach B of maybe moving that to when you played Josh, I think it was 107, 108, and 109. Has that an ongoing discussion, or are you satisfied with where student and band are located right now? The students will stay where they're at now. Uh, we, we built that section for the students when we did the renovation back in 2007. Uh, we're always looking at, at different options, uh, not to say what we may or may not do in the future, but for this year we're, we're really excited about uh, that north end zone and, and the great uh, atmosphere that we can create down at that end of the field. And I know you addressed midway into the season some of the challenges you were experiencing with security and getting people into the stadium from tailgating and everything. Did you find solutions throughout the year that you find that will work at the start of this 2023 season? We did. I, I give a lot of credit to our staff. I, I, we challenged them as we faced some of those uh, situations early in the year, and, and I felt like they really rallied around the cause and brought a lot of creativity and, and ingenuity into how to make those things a more seamless experience for our fans. I felt like the, the entrance line, security, ticketing, all that uh, was, a, was a much improved experience the last several games. I was even able to be out there uh, in Grange Grove a couple of those games and to see the lines flowing more freely. Uh, we, we always have room to grow. Uh, we're always looking to be better, but I'm, I'm uh, really confident in the people we have and, and looking forward to, to welcoming people with uh, uh, a very easy experience uh, when the season kicks off this fall. Doug? So one for Josh, one for Cassie. And Josh, uh, any, any discussions about uh, the west side of the stadium, and future improvements to that? And then does this, this campaign only affect season tickets? Any discussion about single game tickets and reduction of those? Again, I would say in, in relation to the question about the stadium, we are in ongoing evaluation of the building and, and working on plans to make incremental improvements to that space. Uh, we certainly know that, that uh, there are things that we can do better there. We're continuing to look for, for ways that, that we can capitalize. We want to make sure we, we not only get the fans in the building, but we offer them a world-class experience when we're there. And, and when when uh, we're able to do that, we need to make sure that we put our best foot forward. And so uh, that is a, an ongoing effort on our part uh, and uh, excited about what some of those changes will look like this year, but, but then in future years as well. Yeah, the, the focus of this campaign is really on the season ticket holder because of the commitment we, we want our fans to make and we hope that they want to make themselves in coming out all seven Saturdays. Um, we have already released our single game ticket prices so that people can understand the great value that is in the season ticket and that be more of an incentive for people to commit themselves and, and invest in this team, both as a season ticket holder and as a fan. Um, so it, it is a campaign that really is it's, it's about selling tickets and about getting people in the stadium, but it's also about people kind of joining this community of being part of the family. So we'll, you'll see a lot of visual indicators throughout the campaign, which is between now and when we kick off against Toledo in September, of people kind of calling themselves and identifying themselves as members of the family, of being part of this Illini family, whether it's car magnets and, and social campaigns. Um, you know, we really want to embrace the fact that we've got fans who have who have been coming to games for 50 plus years, um, re reward those who have been incredibly loyal while also um, you know, trying to grow and build people who have been fans for a year or two years or around you know, that short time knowing that they've got a lot of memories still to make. Bryce in the way back. Last women's home game tonight. What are your thoughts with Shauna Green and just the turnaround with this program? I couldn't be more impressed with Coach Green and, and happier with the progress that our women's team has shown this year. Uh, so much uh, appreciation for the, the great work and leadership that's gone into to this turnaround effort. Uh, give a lot of credit, obviously, to Coach, but, but also to the staff she's assembled, to the student athletes, the way that they have 
bought in to, to her energy and to the, the vision that she has for this program. And, and lastly, I want to shout out the fans. It's really been remarkable, uh, the, the, the uh, turnaround that we've seen in our attendance, the appetite that our fans have shown for embracing this program. Uh, looking forward to having another great crowd tonight, but it's just been you know, one of the feel-good uh, stories of, of this year, certainly, and uh, looking forward to continuing to build on it in, in years ahead and, and uh, hopefully a really exciting postseason for this, for this team. And if I could add, you know, we have a, a chance tonight to become one of the top five total attendance in women's basketball history for us, and, and Shauna will be only the second coach to accomplish that all previous five seasons where we've had uh, this volume of attendance have been under the Coach Grant's era. So for her to do it in one year is pretty exceptional. Scott? I guess it's maybe for both of you, but have there been discussions about turning ticket purchasers into ticket users? Because I know at least one game last year, there was like a 20,000 person gap in between the you know, number distributed, the number that actually went into the stadium. There's no question. I, I think it's really important that we, we get the tickets sold, but then we also need to get the tickets used. And, uh, and, and so it all ultimately ties back to the experience that they have when they're in the building. And it starts with the things that are happening on the field uh, around our team. And, and, but uh, we all understand, I think, the, the atmosphere and the experience that is an Illinois football game. And so from the time they pull out of their garage until they return home that night, we need to be really thoughtful about every part of that experience and continue to look for ways to make it uh, as, as strong and as memorable as we possibly can. And so it, it's an ongoing effort, uh, but certainly uh, the sales are only one part of this. We need to get people in the building in order to capture the full benefit that is there, not only for our team, but just as importantly for the fans themselves. They have a better time when the building is full than they do when it's uh, when it's sparse. And so we, we need to make sure that we do that for a lot of different reasons. Follow-up, Scott? Kind of. Um, uh, just with the future Big Ten schedules, I mean, is there a date where this needs to happen? I mean, are you up you know, against the deadline? And I guess where have you fallen maybe in some of these conversations about what's next for football in the Big Ten? I, I don't know that there is a, a date. 2024 is still a ways out. And, and so at some point, certainly there is a date where we have to get that uh, figured out and, and announced. I, I think those two things could be independent of one another when, once when we make the decision and then secondly when we're in a position to communicate that to the public. Um, I, I've shared my comments on where I kind of see the future going and, and what I'd like to see. I, I'm a, uh, a big believer in, in some of our geographic and, and historical rivalries and I'd love to see those uh, carried forward. But I also recognize we're in a new era of college football. The conference is expanding, uh, and we need to be prepared to change with that. And so uh, there, there are pros and cons to every different approach that we could take, and, and we recognize that on all fronts. And uh, ultimately, we'll embrace whatever we decide. And, and we know that in order to accomplish our goals, we've got to win the games in front of us. And so whoever's out there, we'll go out and do our, our best to, uh, to come home with a victory. Bryce in the back. What are your thoughts about the men's and women's team getting to the NCAA tournament? I, I couldn't be more excited about that. We were talking the other day just trying to prepare for the postseason and, and what that could look like, and you never want to put the cart before the horse. We've got some more work to do on both fronts. We need to go out and, and win some more games, both with the women's and the men's teams. But uh, anticipating that, uh, that we'll get those berths is, is certainly something that's exciting for us to think about, uh, and it'll be a, a fun uh, experience to be, be able to, to kind of go back and forth between the, the two teams and the different venues and, and to know that we've got uh, a horse in, in both races would be, uh, would be really exciting, not only internal to the athletic program, but I hope for our entire fan base. Doug. Josh, I know you don't have any breaking news for us on the Big Ten commissioner job, but what, what's kind of the profile that everyone is looking for in the new person? And then what are some of the challenges that they face uh, when they come into the job? Yeah, I, I, I don't really want to speak a lot about that search. I have a lot of confidence in, in the presidents and chancellors of, of this league who will ultimately make that decision. Uh, I think the Big Ten has a very strong identity. We've got tremendous tradition. There are things that have underpinned this conference for generations that I, I think and, and hope will continue to be foundational pillars of the Big Ten. Um, but ultimately, you know, we're going to find the right person to fit that position. 
uh, and, and, and every person who is a stakeholder in this conference will uh, be there to help support that person and encourage that transition and, uh, and put them in the best position to be successful. But in terms of, of specific characteristics or, or, uh, or other thoughts, not, not a lot more to, to share at this point. Matt, and we get, we'll wrap up here in just a minute. Go ahead, Matt. On scheduling, I'm curious, Josh, what's the conversations among your colleagues about scheduling with now a nationwide league for the non-revenue sports? not having to do with football and how do you make that make sense with sports like you know soccer softball volleyball those types of things it's a, a again an ongoing effort we have a lot of really talented staff members who are putting a lot of thought into those specific questions you, you really have to go literally sport by sport and say okay what how many regular season competitions are we going to have what is a postseason going to look like is it an all comers championship event? Is it a more limited field? Uh, are there ways to try and, um, and make the travel more efficient? Could you share airplanes? Could you travel to neutral sites? Could you have some form of travel partners? There are a lot of different ways that we could piece that together to try and make it as efficient uh, and um, meaningful for the student athletes, cost effective uh, as, we, as we possibly can. Uh, it's a it's a big puzzle. Uh, the good news is we have about a year and a half yet to, to still try and figure it out. Um, but it, it is an ongoing effort now, uh, and and one that uh, I have a lot of confidence will will solve in a in a very effective way. You were very meticulous in looking for a new leader for women's basketball. What were kind of qualities that you saw in Coach Green when you were uh, interviewing her, and how is it? kind of more evident now now the team's had this much success in such a quick amount of time these positions whether you're talking about a, a head football coach a head basketball coach any of our, our head coaching positions the longer I'm around this the more I'm convinced they're 90 percent about leadership you know they're they're about finding people who are in a position to create trust who are able to influence action and in from my first conversation with Shauna you just felt the leadership qualities oozing out of her. Uh, you, you understood how she could connect with young women in her program. You understood how she could connect with recruits, how she could relate to parents, uh, how she could recruit a, a staff. Um, there was a really strong vision, and she was able to convey and communicate that vision in a very effective way. Uh, certainly her, her track record spoke for itself. I, I'm a big believer that people who win uh, are, are winners, you know, and, they, and they, they carry that forward from one level to the next or one stop to the next. And, and when you find people who have that track record, then that's a really strong indicator that there's going to be the opportunity to bring something similar to, to this institution. And, um, and, and the other things I, I think that really were important to me were – uh, trying to identify somebody, and, and this is true in all of our coaching searches, who's genuinely enthusiastic about embracing the tradition of fighting line athletics, and in this case, Illinois women's basketball. We never want to find somebody who just wants to be a Power 5 head coach or who just wants to be a Big Ten head coach, but somebody who doesn't necessarily have to have grown up aspiring to be a head coach at the University of Illinois, but who has an appreciation for what it means to be here and who has an open and willing mind and heart to embrace everything that it means to be a part of this athletics program and this university. Uh, and, and again, from my earliest conversations with Shauna, it was evident that she was enthusiastic about this job. She saw a great opportunity to come in and make a, an impact and a difference. Felt like there was a legacy opportunity here with Illinois women's basketball that uh, was compelling for her. and And so, uh, it, it, it was pretty clear pretty quickly that, um, that she would be a great fit here, and uh, we're just beyond excited with uh, how quickly things have happened and, and the great progress that that program has made.